Hi, it's another great day in Cota de Casa, and this is springtime in Southern California. And what better time is there to look for butterflies, especially on our butterfly bush. This is a Budlia davidii. I got some monarchs and a few painted ladies flying around here. The hard thing is to get them to land, all right? So this here, this is a monarch butterfly. It is probably the most familiar butterfly in North America. Now she's considered to be a large butterfly, can have a wingspan up to four inches long. Now she's mostly just called a monarch, but also known as a milkweed, common tiger, wanderer, and black-veined brown. And most famous for the huge fall migrations which happen each year. So these butterflies, they spend their summers breeding in northern United States and Canada, then in fall, they fly thousands of miles south down to California and Mexico. Then in spring, they fly back up north. Here, look at this. We got a pretty little bee here on our butterfly bush. All right. See over here, here we got a painted lady butterfly, Vanessa Cardui. Now she's formerly known as a cosmopolitan. She's also the very common and is the most widespread of any butterfly species in North America. So at first glance, our painted lady looks like a monarch. She's a bit smaller, has a darker outer wing, and the rows of dots at the tips of the front and the back wings are much different. Now painted ladies, they also migrate in huge swarms, but in contrast to the monarchs, instead of fall, we see them peak in spring as they migrate north from Mexico to the Pacific Southwest. How about that? Okay, so who else do we have here? On our beautiful butterfly bush. All right, down here in the shadow a little bit. Okay, here. This is a funereal dusky wing. Aranus funeralis. Okay, it's a medium-sized butterfly down in California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, down to Argentina, and even Chile. In the dark upper side, with white margins at the base. And I don't have much else to say about this uh, funereal dusky wing. Here we got another bee here. Wow, that's a darker bee. Anyway, we're gonna head down here, out to this open area, okay? We got a lot of mustard plants, and here's where we're going to find some really little butterflies. All right. So in our short pod mustard, we usually find our smallest butterflies. All right. All right. This guy here, he's a Western Pygmy Blue, Brifidium exilus. And this little guy here is the smallest butterfly in North America. And he's probably the second smallest butterfly in the entire world. Now she's about the size of the fingernail on your little pinky finger. The upper side on the hind wing is copper brown with white at the base. And the fringe is mostly white with three black spots near the base. And she's got rows of spots on the outer margin. All right, what else we got? Okay, another little butterfly. How about that? Okay, this is an Ackman Blue. Blebeus Ackman. All right, kind of looks like a Western Pygmy Blue, but she's a lot larger. It can be found north to Oregon and south down to Baja, California. And of course, she's a very tiny butterfly as well. And the tops are blue with dark edges, and the underside is white with black spots and a red-orange band on top. And this is a dainty sulfur, also called a dwarf yellow. Now she's native to North America, but this butterfly is a little unique than other butterflies because it has elongated shaped front wings. Now the upper sides are yellow with the tip of the front wing being black. She also has black bars which extend along the trailing edge of the front wing. And this one here, this is a yellow cloudless sulfur, okay? It's a medium-sized butterfly, never seems to stop moving around. 
and it can be found from Canada down to South America. It likes open spaces, gardens, seashores, waterways, and there's nothing super special about this butterfly except for its bright, radiant yellow colors. All right, so on our mustard here, we're gonna find a couple more butterflies, all right? This guy down here, wow, he's right down there. It's called a checkered white butterfly. Now he looks like a cabbage white. He's a bit grayish, has brownish type spots on his wings. Now she's common in the southwestern United States and northern Mexico, and you usually find them out in the open, dry, vacant lots, dry grasslands, lots of developed areas and urban uh, locations. And like the cabbage white, the larvae, they dine on mustards and vegetables. And our cabbage white butterfly, there he is. He's a medium-sized butterfly. He's found throughout North America, Europe, even New Zealand. And you recognize him by his white wings and small black dots. Now she's the mother of the cabbage worm, who's a detriment to Brassicaceae plants, like mustards, cabbages, and other vegetables. All right, so on the bridge here above our creek, we've got a little dark butterfly. This is a morning cloak, Nymphalis antiopa, or antiopa. She's also called a white petticoat, or a grand surprise. It sort of looks like a funereal dusky wing, but it has a full band of white around the edges of her wings. It also has a row of silvery patches next to the white band. And this butterfly has one of the longest lifespans of any butterfly on Earth. It can live up to an entire year. It is also the state insect of Montana. So how about that? All right, so up here in our coast live oak tree, we've got another beautiful butterfly. And this is a Lorquin's Admiral, Lemonitis Lorquini. Now it's found in California from the Sonoran Desert up to Canada, it has black brown wings, each with a row of spots, and the four wings have orange tips. Now these butterflies are very unique since they only have one brood per year. Whereas most California butterflies, they have multiple broods per year. Now these guys are also super territorial and they will attack intruders, even birds. Wow, Lorquin's Admiral. Here's our California sister, Adelpha Californica. Very common in California, but also found in Nevada, Oregon, and Baja California. Now he's not very good to eat, so he likes to be very colorful so his predators can recognize him and leave him alone. Now his wings are dark brown to black with creamy white bands. He's got two orange patches near the tip. Very beautiful butterfly, our California sister. So this butterfly is a common buckeye. He probably originated in Africa but today is naturally found in the United States east of the Rocky Mountains and in Mexico. Now we also find him here in Southern California. He likes to visit our non-native invasive plants, which are more conducive to his natural habitat. And they're super picky about where they lay their eggs. Now he likes open areas with low vegetation, some bare ground. He is super colorful, orange, black, white, blue, and magenta. He has very prominent eye spots. He is also very much a solo butterfly, and you don't usually see him with other buckeyes. It's our common buckeye. Here, this is our gray hair streak. It is the most common of the hair streak butterflies in ranges over all of North America. You can also find him throughout Central and South America as well. He can get about 1.2 inches long. The upper sides of his wings are gray with an orange spot on the hind margin and the undersides of his wings are a lighter gray with white and black lines. So here is a western tiger swallowtail. Papilio rotulus. It's very common in California in western North America from British Columbia down to Baja California. This is a rather large super colorful butterfly with a wingspan up to four inches long. It's got bright yellow wings augmented with black striped patterns and she gets her name swallowtail from the two tails on her hind wings, which fork out and resemble swallows' tails. You find them mostly in urban parks and gardens, sometimes in woodlands and riparian areas. This little guy here is a fiery skipper, 
Now he almost looks like a moth, but unlike most butterflies, he's very fuzzy and his antennae are very short. Now he's only about an inch long, the males are orange or yellow, and the females are dark brown. Now we find him throughout all of the southern United States, out to the West Indies, down to Central America and Argentina, and he's become a problem out in Hawaii. Now what is very strange about this butterfly is that he can hold his front wings upright at the same time his hind wings are folded flat. He does this to better absorb the sunlight, keep him warm and energized, so he can fly away quickly in case of danger. But I wonder if this praying mantis might just be a little quicker. Oh, okay. Well, that's nature for you. Okay. Well, thanks for watching our video on butterflies. Have a great day. Bye.